No, that's terrifying. Did you hear the noise it made, dude? Holy! That was like 50% oh throttle. God. That was like 50% throttle. This is the fastest like power to the floor car I've ever been in. Today should be the day that we finally drive the DF Goblin kit car. You guys already know based on the intro whether we drove it or not because we probably put a little little spicy drive clip or a engine blew up clip right before this, but today should be the day that we end up driving it. But before we go too much further, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a minute. My name's Gray if you're new here and we've been building this DF Goblin kit car here on the channel for quite a bit. So if that sounds cool to you, be sure to subscribe down below. We are almost done with it and hopefully today should be the first drive. Now the reason why we've been kind of MIA for the past couple of couple of weeks, maybe even a month at this point, is because this thing has given us a bunch of issues. And I'm gonna just, before we get started, I wanna walk through everything that we've kind of done off camera because it was a bunch of little tiny boring stuff that we didn't exactly know how to fix, but we figured it out now, so I wanna kinda of tell you guys what went wrong. All right, so starting at the front, we had to run a wiring harness, this main harness, through this center tunnel here. And basically, it was routed wrong so that we couldn't put that cover on. So we had to disconnect a coolant line and swap it on the other side of the thingamabob here. So we had to do that, the wiring harness, I mean, by thingamabob. So we also, I don't know if you guys saw us mounting the heat exchanger. Basically, we had to mount a heat exchanger underneath the radiator so that was a little bit of a pain you're supposed to do that before the radiator we didn't really know that we did it now we got it working it's fine we also had a slight issue with the battery terminal so we got nice new nice whatever amazon battery terminals um we had an issue with the bleeder basically we broke this so i had to just tap it with a new thing that's i just touched that it's still kind of leaking so another thing that we're going to be fixing today moving backwards uh, we had probably the biggest issue had everything to do with this. We thought, if you notice behind me, there's another engine here for a goblin. I thought we blew this engine on the first start. Uh, basically, if you go back and watch that clip, we might put it in right here. You hear that noise, right? The clacking noise? Yeah, I hear it. That's not a knock, is it? <laughs> it sounds like knock to me. That's pretty bad. Yeah, I know it's not good. It's not a good noise. You can hear a very subtle clunking noise or a knocking noise that sounded like rod knock. And I was like, oh man, we did something wrong and the engine is toast. It's it kablooied. And so anyways, I bought another engine for like 500 bucks because it looked really good and it was 500 bucks. And I was like, I can just swap the engine, rebuild this engine, and then we'll get it on the road faster. Instead of having to pull all that apart, rebuild it, and put it back in. I figured I would just put everything on this engine, put it in while I rebuild that one. Boom, we have a backup engine. Well, we do have a backup engine, it's just this wasn't knocking. I thought this cylinder was knocking, cylinder one, near the transmission. Turns out that when we put the new transmission on, we forgot to bleed the system, or we didn't really forget, it was just kind of a, oh, we'll bleed it later kind of a thing, when we bleed the brakes, which we hadn't hooked up yet. And so when we started it, the basically the clutch had no pressure on it, and it was just kind of rattling, and it sounded like knock. But I realized it was coming from the transmission when I came back and looked at it with a clear head, and we bled the system, and it wasn't knocking anymore. So, fix that. We did have another issue with the engine as well. It kept throwing a code. It threw like 11 codes at first. One of those happened to be because of a ground cable or most of them happened because of bad grounds or like the harness wasn't hooked up perfectly. There was one code we couldn't get rid of and it had to do with the barometric pressure sensor which has to do with elevation. Um, so basically when you change an altitude, the air pressure changes and the car has to adjust the mixture for that. It kept throwing a voltage high code, which to me indicated a bad ground or a short. Turns out that there are two sensors that have the exact same plug. The only difference is the wires. So we had to switch them and I did that 
but then it threw a bunch of more codes and I was like, oh no, we must have had them right the first time. Turns out I just needed to clear those codes and they were backwards, so we got that figured out. So those were our main problems that we have been dealing with. Again, a bunch of little boring stuff that like doesn't really look good on camera, like diagnosing engine codes was sitting here with an OBD2 and switching plugs um, and a multimeter. So that's not like fun, but I did want to talk about it so you guys know, and we'll make a full video on all of the issues that we had on this car. So if you are building one of these things, you kind of know what to look for. But with that said, that means we're doing more stuff today. Big stuff, fun stuff, including hopefully driving this thing. So let me tell you what we're doing today. As you see in the interior, there is no interior. Basically, we still need to put the seats in and that's one thing that we're doing today. We also need to put in the rear firewall or the bulkhead, whichever, wh whatever you want to call it. We have to put that in. We have to bleed the brakes in the whole system. Basically, I need to re-bleed the clutch because they're connected to the brakes. I need to wire up the mirrors here and hook up the shifter cable and the e-brake. And after we do all that, plus a little tidying of the wiring harness maybe, we should be good to go to drive it. We will see, There's a, those, there might be one or two other things, but pretty self-explanatory, so we're just gonna go ahead and get started. There's three rivet points. There's one in the rear, one in the middle, and then one up front. I need to remove this kick plate to get to the one up front, so I'm gonna do that. I'm a little concerned about this pedal being in the way, but I'm hoping I can work around it. And then we'll do the two back here. So the other thing that I have to do is before I rivet, I have to go through and drill out the powder coat from each and every hole. And I think based on the bag with all the rivets, there's probably 30 holes. So let's go ahead and get going on that. I got new gloves for both Logan and I. They're the same gloves we've been wearing on the channel, but they're so nice that we beat ours up so much that I need to get more. So if you guys want to get some cool gloves like this, we'll link them down below. They're on Amazon Prime Days right now, so. Grease Monkey. Yeah. Sponsor us. <laughs> yes, yeah, please. But they're kind of funny, like wrench goes here, like funny little gloves. So highly recommend these if you guys are looking for some good shop gloves. Okay, so I wanted to show where we're at. Basically, you can see we've got the tunnel mostly mocked up. All those little silver pins are rivets. We're just putting them in place, making sure everything lines up properly before we actually permanently attach those. And the thing that we're dealing with is that doesn't really fit over. I'm not sure if it's because of the powder coat or something on it's just a little too tight or what, but we gotta, we gotta fix that as well. It was a little tedious, but we got everything buttoned up and it looks good. Now all we have to do is go through and actually rivet everything down with the rivet gun, which is actually the fun part. And you weren't here last time. Yeah, he didn't get last time. So he gets to try it this time. Um, I'll show you how to do it. It's pretty fun. So as always, pretty much all the tools that we use are gonna be linked down below along with the gloves and everything else. In case you guys want these tools, the rivet gun's not one that we use all the time. In fact, this is really the only thing we've used it for, but we'll probably be using it for a new project coming up here soon. Something to look forward to after this thing that is probably gonna be insanely hard and very fun at the same time. So be sure to look forward to that. Anyways, let's go ahead and I'll show you how to use the rivet gun. Fit. And a beautiful, beautiful rivet job here. Wait, 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 we can do this for the first time. No! <laughs> we went ahead and took a bit of a break for dinner. I don't rem remember what I said last, but we're gonna take the gasket maker, just go along where this is going to contact the bars kind of stick it to it and then run the rivets through. We found the rivets, they all fit easily without the powder coat being drilled. So we're just gonna go ahead and do it and see how it goes. Okay, so we went ahead and went through and mounted down the firewall. It looks all pretty now, the rivets are in. Basically, this is what it looks like. We cleaned up all the excess silicone that went around here. You can still see some of it, but like, Overall, looks pretty good. The firewall's in. It's actually starting to look like an actual interior now. There's Logan next to basically the fully built car now. And this is jacked in the this air. This is jacked up. Like this it's is... It's gonna be like, it's gonna be like down here. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe like, yeah, probably to about there is where the actual height will be. Cause it's only about like from where the wheels will be. So yeah, that's like, that's in the air and that's how tall it is. The whole interior, dude, is gonna be 
yeah, no, it's tiny. So like, yeah, they're like, they're, you can see some like a drill, water bottle. Like you can see how, how tiny this thing actually is on the inside. Not only that, the engine, like you sit, <laughs> so you nice. sit right there and the engine is right there. Like it is right behind where you sit. Like you can basically see the cockpit from right there and then the engine's right there. It's gonna be screaming. Oh, it's so, and the supercharger's right behind your head too. Whereas in the Cobalt, since it was front mounted, the supercharger was away from you. Now it's right behind your head. Now basically we went ahead and bled the entire system as well. We didn't record that because we had brake fluid everywhere and I didn't want to touch the really nice camera with the brake fluid. You guys know how to bleed brakes anyway. If you don't, Chris Fix has a video for it. Pretty easy, but we bled the brakes. So we might as well go ahead and start it for you guys because I don't think you guys have like really heard this thing started. Like you have, but not like actually. Um, so we're gonna take a second, open the door so you guys can hear what that thing sounds like. Oh man, dude, I'm so excited for this. This is gonna be so great. Logan's walking around right now. We got a live stream going on, on Instagram, so if you guys aren't already, you should go follow the Instagram. That way you can kind of see this stuff happen real time. But basically we're gonna be starting the Goblin because we really haven't shown that too much. And dude, if it doesn't start, I'm gonna be really <laughs> upset. So let's find out. going on there I know uh, we were live while we were doing that on Instagram again if you don't follow me on Instagram you get to see all of this stuff real time so we'll put the Instagram link down below it's living like Greg just like the YouTube channel and you get to see updates on this thing pretty much real time so I post reels almost every day and I've got a broadcast channel and we go live one of the things is Logan and I are so shocked about that because it has never sounded that good since we have been doing our testing. Um, that is the first time that we have started it and it sounds that smooth and amazing. It's nuts. So before when we would blip the throttle, it would be like, like, whoa, ah, and then drop. Yeah, I would like hold it there for a second. It is running super well. It is idling super well. Everything on this car as of right now is just money. Um, we are waiting on- It just works. Uh, it just works. It I just mean, works. obviously, like, it's not going to be done even when we drive it, right? Yeah. Like, there's still plenty of stuff that we're going to be doing, like modification. Like, one thing that really bothers both Logan and I is the valve cover looks like it has a disease. Whoever painted it before me, it just wasn't a good paint job or just wore down over time. So we're going to probably get that, like, powder coated eventually. Not sure when. Probably when I pick out the color scheme. Speaking of color scheme, I wanted to get you guys' opinion. I think I have a color picked out. Originally, we were gonna go all black. We were gonna do black frame, black side panels, and a black cowl. But I have been seeing some photos of some cage cars and exo cars that have an all black frame and then like a solid color cowl, like the front piece. And the colors that I have seen that I have liked, obviously, is blue. Dark, deep red, kind of like this. Not like super dark, but like kind of a rich red, like Milwaukee red. There we go. Milwaukee, dude. You can make a Milwaukee sponsored. Like, come on. That would actually be really funny. We could go black. I'm not opposed to going all black, go full Batmobile. Um, my only concern with that is like, it is already a small car and hard to see that if we drive it at night and it's black, it's gonna be even harder to see. We could go some crazy like orange color or I don't really wanna do green, but again, what do you guys wanna see? Look up some cool photos and stuff. Just wanna get your opinion. So go in the comments down below, tell us what color you would want to see on this. And maybe I'll do like an Instagram poll when this video goes live of what color I should do. So anyway, again, we only have a couple pieces left that we need to put on after that. Like, we can drive it. And so our goal is today is Saturday. Our goal is Friday to have all of those pieces on. Maybe drive it Saturday or drive it Friday if possible. But that's kind of our goal. So we're gonna pause right now. I'm gonna set the camera down and I will see you guys in about a week. Be right back. 
Okay, and we are back. It's been a couple of days, but I think we finally have all the parts we need to finally finish this car. At least, fingers crossed, hopeful. We got some new headlights here that I've kind of started to mount up and mock up a little bit. But the main piece that we've been missing that's been preventing us from driving this car is, there's two pieces actually, the shifter cable bracket for the transmission. It holds the shifter cables in place. We have that now, that is a DF part. And then to make that bracket fit, I needed a new thermostat housing. So we have the new thermostat housing. We gotta do some silly, weird stuff to run the coolant lines now that we have the new thermostat housing. So we are going to hook that up. Logan is currently working on the e-brake cable down there. So we have the new e-brake cable kit to run that. And we also have brand new tail lights that go on the back of the car. So we have everything we need. We just got to route everything and get it all sorted. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on that. And hopefully we'll be driving it today. Logan's working on the e-brake kit. As you can see, basically it's super long. So he's cutting it down to size. Basically he has to remove this sheath that protects it. And then there is a steel cable inside said sheath that we have to trim down as well. So that's what he is currently working on. While he's looking at that, I am going to start draining the coolant so we can hook up the new thermostat. Okay, so I've made quite a bit of progress here. Let me go ahead and show you guys what we've done so far. So, like I said, we were working on the e-brake and I have got it fully set up here. Logan cut this piece in half. This was one piece. We cut it in half so we could use the stock uh, balancer, I guess you would call it. And then we cut the braided lines down and added some heat shrink to make it look all nice. Now, when you pull the e-brake, it applies tension there. And the caliper right here, can't move the hub, you can't move the brake, nothing. But when I disconnect the e-brake, put it down like you would, you're getting ready to go. Now it turns freely. So that's a win. We won't know if it entirely works until we actually like test it and get going with the car. But I think we ran through a couple of different versions of that and that is so far the best one. So that's pretty much ready for the drive. Now, Logan has been working back here on removing the thermostat housing that did not fit. He got the old one off, which is the one I just showed you, and put the new one on. Now the challenge is running the coolant lines to match the old setup. One of the things that he's working on right now specifically is he is hooking up the shifter cables now that we can fit the shifter cable bracket to make sure that that's all run properly and that can work before we start hooking up the new coolant lines. So we're gonna do a little shift test. If everything works well and shift happens, then we're good to go. Basically, we should be able to go side to side, which I can, at least I can go one direction. Um, I think the reverse lockout might be kind of in my way a little bit. All right, so we can go side to side. Now the question is, is can we go, okay, in gear, in gear, in gear, in gear, in gear, dude. It works. It works. <laughs> so basically what Logan's doing whenever he's shifting is these cables come all the way through the back and they move this guy right here. So that is the connector to the transmission. And so whenever he shifts, go ahead, Logan. It moves that little piece with those cables. So it's a very uh, fun feeling. It's like a very affirmative shift. What I said in when we did the test drive of it was I said it felt like a gated manual. That's what I'm talking about. It is a very clicky bolt action style like again gated manual where it's just like ch -ch 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 into each gear. So and for a cable driven transmission that's pretty cool. So anyway that's a win. Now we need to actually take those cables off. We were just doing a test fit. Um, make sure that works before we perma mount the new thermostat housing. So now we need to 
hook everything up for the new thermostat housing, the new coolant lines, all of it, and that's gonna be a huge pain. So Logan's gonna start working on that. While he's doing that, I am probably going to be working on the headlights and maybe the taillights. Starting to wire that up, make sure everything looks a-okay there. So let's get going. So we have spent the last few hours working on, it looks the exact same, but we've been working on this. Basically running a vacuum line temporarily to the intake manifold and then redoing all of the coolant lines here to support the new thermostat housing, which is right here. So basically now what we're gonna be doing is putting in the seats. So after we put in the seats, put the wheels on, put the wheels on, we'll probably drop it, put it on the ground, and then it's just a matter of like buttoning up a couple little things and then driving it. So anyway, we're gonna put the seats in and get going. All right, cool. Okay, we have now got seats mocked up, mounted for the most part, and then we have wheels on. So now, technically, we can lower the car. Um, and we can't really start it or drive it, but we can do a little push and a brake test. So we're gonna mess around, mainly because we just wanna see it on the ground and see what it feels like to actually sit in it with it rolling. So that's what we're doing next. Okay, so after a few hours of working, you can see the big grin on my face. We actually test fitted everything. The seats, the wheels and tires, and we, for the first time in a year, we have put it on the ground. And so here is the big reveal of it on the ground, and it looks <laughs> insane, dude. <laughs> It is so, okay, so it looks a little janky with only one headlight on it, but like, look how crazy, like, how low this thing is. How much is this clear? To the ground. It's like five, in, not even five inches, That's... four inches. Dude, and then the seats inside of it. This thing is terrifying, actually. This is actually terrifying. Okay, so we aren't driving it tonight, but do you want to push it? I'll push you on it. Yes, we're doing that. We're, we're doing a brake test. This is very scientific. It is very necessary, very important, um, and totally not just tomfoolery of any <laughs> sort. <laughs> okay, this is one of the coolest things. All right. Oh, dude, this is so low to the ground. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Dude, let me try to get out of it. Wait. Let me wait. Oh. Look at that, dude. No. Dude, this looks so insane. We built that, dude. <laughs> I haven't gotten this excited about a car in a very long time. This is insane. This has been a year in the making. And look how crazy that looks, dude. Like, no, that's insane. So as you guys have seen, we have the, like, we, it's, we've deemed it the problem child. So the DF Goblin is now the problem child. We have the problem child outside in the courtyard it's got its first breath of fresh air we're not starting it tonight though um for a couple reasons one we still have to button up a couple of things we're missing a couple little bolts we need to wire some stuff but it's really easy just minute stuff also 
for the video wise, we want to drive it for the first time with the sun and everything. So we're gonna come back tomorrow morning and drive this thing. Like 100%, like it's, it should be good to go unless something terrible happened. It is the problem child after all. But look how crazy this thing is. It is absolutely insane. Pretty much everything I was hoping, um, at least so far. So I will see you guys in about 24 hours. See you in a minute. Okay, so it is the next day. And as you can see, the goblin is sitting pretty behind me. And it, uh, we put the other headlight on, so now it looks all balanced out. It looks pretty good. And we have pretty much put every little thing on to do a test drive. Now, when I say test drive, I mean like forward and back, not like around anything, because we haven't fully checked the suspension. I still need to set preload and everything like that, but I think it's good enough to start it. Probably we're gonna push it out and then we're gonna do a little forward and back test. So that's what we're doing now. A little nervous, crossing my fingers here, a little concerned about it, but we've done everything right that we know of. So let's go ahead and get to it. Enough, enough stalling, let's just do it. We're in neutral, or at least we should be. Clutch in. Check that coolant level for me, we're looking good. That's clutch pedal out, so that's a little concerning. Not good news. Not good news. Okay, so it's been about an hour since we last picked up the camera, and as you saw about an hour ago, I was really depressed. Now I'm not so depressed. We just got a little glimmer of hope after a lot of research and stuff like that. First we thought our clutch was done, busted, like we messed up putting it in. But luckily Cameron and Logan and I all kind of spitballed ideas and eventually Logan noticed that the rear axles weren't all the way mounted into the transmission. I thought no way that's it, but we're at the end of our rope so we're gonna try it. Before we hammered these axles in, when it was in gear, we could push it. Now that it's in gear, I can't push it and the e-brake is down. So that is a huge, huge win. So we're gonna do a little test run right here. That was a little weird, but... Oh. Holy sh Trying to find reverse. So it's like axle rattle or something. But I want to do this. So hold on. So that's definitely like clutch. Or throw out bearing or something. It's because it's clutch out. Here, Logan, hop in. Do a loop. You're next, Cameron. Just am hop I, in. Am I driving? No, you're just going to ride with me. Oh my god. Yeah, it's getting worse. Oh, now it's rattling. Yeah, it's like we have a clutch leak or something. Yeah, I hear how that's like... Dude, 
the noise that that just made. Are you ready? Yeah. That was like 50% oh throttle. God. That was like 50% throttle. That was not even full throttle. No, that's terrifying. Did you hear the noise it made, dude? It's insane. That was my pants being torn off. Oh my gosh, dude. Like, like Is shaking, it still? Like, it's like still kind of doing it. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm gonna do it one more time. Okay. <laughs> Everything is so touchy. The brakes, the throttle, like all of it is so touchy. That's insane. I didn't even get the second. This thing's terrifying. No, that's scary sounding, dude. That is scary. Big wins, big, big wins. Still don't know why my clutch is rattling, but. Oh my God, dude, holy shit. <laughs> okay, that was absolutely insane. That was, this is probably the fastest car I've ever been in. Oh, this is the fastest like power to the floor car I've ever been in. I'm actually a little scared of this thing. <laughs> the noises it makes, the intake is right behind my head. So it's just like sucking in air. And then when you get into the higher RPMs, the supercharger kicks in and it's just insanity. This car, this is a dangerous car. I'm a little concerned about the rattling, but this today was a total win. Okay, right, that's it. Thank you guys. Um, we're gonna be taking this out to a car show next week that's here at the garages so we don't have to go far. So be sure to look out for that video next week. Thank you guys for watching, I'll see you next time. Yeah, it's four inches we, we know four inches really well. So like that's definitely three and a half, four. <laughs>